team. Ron Hogarth is the referee. Leon Stickle of Sweden Oxford, the linesman. And we will be moving to the goalies in a moment. Bunny LaRocco plays very well on the road. Is in goal for the Montreal Canadiens. And down in the other end, who else but Jill Mallard. Not a bad goal against every Danny. Well, it should be just a fantastic game tonight. I'll tell you the one thing, the people are alive. And it's been a long time since I've heard people react like this. Okay. For the Montreal Canadiens, we have Jarvis, Ganey, and Chata. And we have the big line, Smith, Payne, and McAdam. Canadians clearing it into Minnesota territory. They race in there. Now back to Robinson. He fired it, and it hit Payne. Payne in the corner trying to get it. The Canadians starting to lay the body off. Robinson jams it off the corner. Chasing it is He's up. Then Ganey went in after his man, Hartford. Here come the North Stars into the center right area. Payne drifts the long one. The first save of Bonilla Rock. And the pass goes over to the far side. Here's Ganey hitting Robinson into the center right area. In over the Minnesota line. Ganey is trying to get in front. Smith clearing it out to center. And McCallum rolled it rather delicately into the corner on the right side. And that is the signal for Minnesota to make changes as the Canadians come back. Jingra with that shot five or six feet wide. In behind the net it goes, it's clear to the corner. Montreal's way down, Ull trying to get it. Now there's almost a fan on that effort by Bombay. Bombay stopped it, two on one for Montreal. Bombay shooting at the rebound. And the loss is up to his old trick. And there was no one there to get the rebound for the Montreal Canadiens. The shots on goal, one apiece. That was a great scoring opportunity for Montreal, but they failed to capitalize on that opportunity. And that has been the story so far in this series on many occasions. Now, the Canadians led by Engblom. Engblom darts into the center ice right area, fired it off the corner board. In behind the net goes McCarthy. He dropped it. There's a penalty coming up. It'll be a stripping penalty. Steve Scott was stripped. Let the guys in front try to deflect it. 
The Canadians with the root. Shut. Napier, Robinson, and Shingo. They have the advantage. Shut. Shoots it off to the corner. Napier hops in there. He's jammed in on the boards by Hartford. Now it's Shut getting it back to Shingo. He takes the shot. The puck is loose in front. They bang away on it. And the North Stars. Spear comes up with it. He hit the referee. That helped the Canadians. Here's Napier taking a look to LaRouche back. He tries to get it to Napier to Robinson. In it goes to LaRouche. LaRouche takes a look. Will he give it to Robinson? Yes, he does. Robinson over at the center of the line. What will he do with it to LaRouche? LaRouche winds up. There's the shot. And again, the North Stars blocking beautifully as they did in Montreal. The Canadians trying to get possession. Into the corner they go. Along the boards, back to Gingra. In it goes, LaRouche to Gingra again over to Robinson. Robinson circling back near the line. He'll fire it, maybe, or get it over on the other side. There is shot over along the boards. Robinson shooting it! And it's back to rebound, another shot, a broken stick. And the North Stars get it into the center ice area. A half minute left in the final day. Back there goes Schneer after him. Gingra, Hartsburg coming up with it. He gets some assistance from Schneer, and they clear it out. 18 seconds left in the final end. Four Canadians cross that Minnesota line. Robinson tried to feed it in front. There's Hartsburg shooting it down the ice. Now there are five seconds from the Canadians start out at the line. They miss it. North Stars have a full complement back there. They are playing now, six aside. Here's Tim Young going in. He spun around, they centered in front. And it's back out over the line to center. Here's Maxwell over to Greg Smith into the corner. Langway takes a look, clears it. It's knocked down by Anderson. In along the board, Young goes after his man. And it's back into the center ice area. A shot wraps off the leg. Another shot, 10 feet wide of the net. Charlie, number 25, is on for Montreal. Late of the Nova Scotia Voyagers. Now puck into the center ice area. Smith getting it over on the far side. The great Smith dropping it back to another Smith. There's the cat of trying to trap it. He does. Here's Kane, a great star in this series. They jab it on the board. And they get a whistle. Minnesota. Wilbur Watch Time is so accurate. It would take to go to the moon. Time so protected. It dwells in the ocean. Time surrounded by a girl and her friends. We offer time to you in more beautiful ways than anyone else in the world. Including ways to wake you up when the commercial is over. and then fail to clear it out. Into the corner, Canadians trying to tie up their man. And it's cleared up on the board to the line. It's golf back in toward the corner. Here's Ganey sending it out over the line. There's no score in this hockey game. 14 minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the opening period. And the North Stars from the line. McCadam gobbles up that pass on the right side. Now it's Jarkra taking over for Montreal. Yes, defenseman Langway with him. Now Langway falls back. Gunners on the ice. Stop. Here's Engblom going in. He fired it. A, a big save by Millard. That was an excellent scoring opportunity for Montreal. Canadians taking over again at their own line, led by Shingra on the right side and rolls in to Millard. He cleared it. The Roos is on the ice. North Stars starting out. Back into their own zone. Canadians were after Zanussi, who got in there deeply into the corner. Now they slash away at it. There's a weak shot. And at the side of the net, Jingra getting this attack organized for Montreal. Gives it to LaRouche to head the shot. Shot having his difficulty picked up by LaRouche. There's the shot! And a splendid save! Bravo! What can you say about this guy, Millard? 
What can Pierre LaRouche say about Milan? How many times, Gary, has he stolen a goal from LaRouche? Well, uh, we're talking to him at the airport, uh, Dick, and he, he just doesn't know what he has to do. Look at him pick up that loose puck. And that thing is playable. But again, a loss with that quickness just throws that glove out. You know, it has it finds its way into that trapper ahead. Ten years in the NHL, Joe Malash has never played a playoff game until last week in the Toronto series. What a show he has put on so far in this one. Seven shots for the Canadians, just one for Minnesota. Canadians, everybody across that Minnesota line. Kinnear clearing it on the left side. McCarthy to Young, and again the Canadian for honored. Robinson collided with McCarthy. They both went down. Robinson into Earl, Earl in the corner. Here's Island centering it in front. And it's just taken away with Maxwell giving it to Anderson at center. Here come the North Stars over the line. McCarthy giving it back, but they give it up. Oh! And an undeliverable save by Bobby Lavoie. Oh, the goaltenders are giving every indication that they're going to be sparkling tonight. A penalty coming up. And finally to Lambert, I believe. No score. This is Stanley Cup 80 from the Met Center of Bloomington, Minnesota. You can feel us coming now, Fresh look on the scene. With a whole new style of living, like you fresh and clean. That's why now we play the age of seven up here. Having our friends in the big trucking table, the line is just a fair. Moving up, moving up, looking up, okay, yeah. And the sky is turning seven up. He's great, Mom. Reaching up, reaching up, feeling up, feeling up. And the sky is turning seven up. Now we're going to see Maxwell break right through the middle. And he's hauled down from behind, but LaRock got a piece of it. And here you'll see, there's Lambert with the trip. He's going to spend the next two minutes in the penalty box. What an opportunity for the North Stars. Well, the North Stars now on the power play. Giles goes along the board against Kenny. And the face-off will be deep in the Canadian territory with 12.52 left in the opening period. There's no score in the hockey game. What a story today in Kirk Giles, the local press, born in the Paw, Manitoba, grew up in Humboldt, Saskatchewan. It's Smith, Payne, McAdam, Hartsburg, and Giles. They are on the points, and the Canadians killing off this penalty with Jarvis and Ganey up front. Robinson on defense with Langway, and Robinson has seen service, I would say, almost averaging 40 minutes in the first two games. And he's been out there a lot tonight. The North Stars clearing it in. There's Payne whipping it around the net. Canadians losing it. The cabin took it away, and then it's recovered by Langway, and he shot it down the ice. Montreal Canadians are shooting the Minnesota North Stars 7-2. North Stars leading in the series, as you probably know. Two to nothing in game. Here's a break. Probably is going to get a bird. He's playing the fly. Probably centering it again. Flat on his back is Joe Malaz. And he comes up with it again. Well, Glenn Sommer is very happy. Thought there should have been a penalty on that play. Look at Charlie all alone. By golly, got to hit the neck here, Dick. Got it wide. Take a little off the shot. Slide it in the corner. There's where Smith went down. Stonmore was disagreeing with Hogarth. Top up there should have been a penalty. But right in there, by golly, just take a little off the shot. Try to hit one of the corners. The time left in the penalty. A minute and two seconds. A minute and two seconds. No score in the hockey game. The Minnesotans get the draw. Maxwell, who had that great scoring opportunity early, gave it to McCarthy over the other side. Young is across the line. He handles that puck well, gets it back to the point. But the Canadians clearing it down on the right side. Now there are 42 seconds left in the penalty to Lambert. Igniting this power play. Was supposed to be Kristoff, but he didn't get anywhere. Canadians doing an excellent job now. They have their defense way up. Now Ganey and Jarvis peel off the back of the line. They stop the North Stars. 
It's Young. Ganey is going after it. Almost picked up a loose puck. Close to Milaj. Here's Young. Pass is too far for E. Could be icing here. It is icing. Against the North Stars and Gary Dornhofer. Canadians seem to be playing well in killing off his country. Well, they're forcing the play out there, but you know, Dick, you talk about the advantage of playing at home, but sometimes it's not advantage when you're not playing so well. Well, you wonder about the beginning of this, the atmosphere around here today. A young hockey team, Gary, a team which had a lot of poise, showed a lot of cool in Montreal, but, you know, there's just been such a tremendous surge of interest here in this area. The ovation at the start. It's going to take the North Stars a while to settle down. Well, sir, they're up there so high right now, right on the cloud. And and so excited, it's time to just settle down a little bit and think what's going on out in that ice. It's been Montreal so far. And there are just 10 seconds left in the penalty. Canadians intercepting back, it goes, it hops over his stick. A Zingra faked the shot, he cleared it off a leg. Just trying to get it, he couldn't come up with it. And Law Bears out of the penalty box and the North Stars coming down. Youngen had it hooked away by LaRouche. Now Bird, who has been outstanding in the series, bounced one in there, and Robinson headbands the puck to center is left there for Napier. Napier darts in. He gives it a shot. There's a shot, and he missed. Canadians getting great chances. There's another shot right off. And a miraculous save by Malash. I didn't think that Malash saw that. You know, Malash Gary has looked behind himself three times tonight in this period, but it's still a scoreless hockey game. With the score, Montreal nothing, Minnesota nothing. This is Stanley Cup 80. All of these oils are good oils. All of them need for a cheap FD We think our oil is better, still fine. In an industry standard test, ours is the only one of these oils that has no permanent viscosity breakdown, no permanent thinning out at all. Our oil, new capsule, EPS, and W50. In the final analysis, doesn't break down. Well, it's Roderell says it's time to stop talking what we have to do. It's time we go out there and show us, show everybody what we can do. I mean, a little, a little secret, gentlemen, our studio is just down the hall from the dressing room. You can hear the Canadians getting ready to come on. They were talking to Gary the first goal. They were yelling about it. That's the force. There's no question about that, Dick. And the North Stars get the draw. They clear it up. Big Robinson is there again, and he knocked it in on the left side. Hartsburg jammed in on the boards by Gainey. There's Bobby Smith. Smith laying it up on the left side. It's into the centerized area. Canadians doing a much more effective job of forecasting in this game than they did in either of the first two games in Montreal. Now the North Stars up on the left side and close to Payne. He's across the line. Watched by Robinson. Robinson gets it to the point. Will they keep it in? They do. Now Shingra lobbed it ahead to Jarvis. Jarvis getting picked up along with Hartsburg. Here's Giles, the little fellow dropping it back. A shot wide across goes around the net. Now the North Stars with some pressure. There's Smith into the corner against Shingra. McAdam trying to center it. The quarters are close. And they get a whistle. Now there's young Steve Payne, 26, 42 goals rather in the regular season. Played in all 80 North Star games, second year. And as Gary pointed out, he leads the team in the goal score department in the playoffs. I like your term, the rooster. <laughs> well, that's what they call him in the room. He just tells everybody how great he is. He can do this, he can do that. And let's face it, he's been doing it. Trovich cascading tumult and noise as he's off a bit. It is just unbearable from the point of view of trying to hear yourself. Now from the face-off, Langway chased by another 17, Kim Young. Anderson tried to keep it in, and it's clear to the Minnesota line. Maxwell over on the other side is dropped back to the second by Ray Van Here's Hull trying to clear it in front. The North Stars, they fail to get out. Finally, they just get rid of it. This is like the first series of the first game, except in reverse. That time it was all Minnesota when they led at one time 16 to 1 in shot. Tonight it's the Canadians, they're leading 9 to 3 with 8 minutes and 50 seconds left. 
in this period of drop pass. To Maxwell, he cleared it in there. Engblom gets it along to the right side. Bromley couldn't get out, and it's Engblom again handing it off. Langway to wink wide pass. Bombier trying to break through there. Bromley was looking for a loose puck, and it's not to center. Here's Langway waiting for his man to make Kate the premise of Minnesota. Now it's back to the line. In his front, it goes! That was a great chance for Steve Shutt, but he just couldn't control it in front. They dig it out along the board. Here's LaRouche trying to get in front. He takes the shot, but it's good by. A pile up in front of the net. They bang away at it. Where is it? They take it up. And LaRouche is there again. Bill now scores. Stanley Capaney will continue in just a moment. Open wide. That's the second of the night, David. Hey, you're smooth. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I've always said when you sold it, you go for it. I've only said when you got it. Hold on. Here. You sure you wouldn't have to look at that? Uh-uh. All that glitter isn't golden. Aha, medium rare. You shouldn't let something this good pass you by. When it's golden, you go for it. All the face-off, back to Shingra. North Stars are breaking off. They flip it ahead, in on the right side. Zanussi dropping it back, and it's called on the offside. Gary Dornoff, for this goal tending by Milaj, is just as good as Bernie Perron was in that final game in Buffalo that you won in 75 2 to nothing to win the Stanley Cup. Well, there's no question. That's the key position. Bernie won it for us. And right now, Milaj is keeping the North Stars in it until they can get on track. But I've never seen the Canadians skate better than they are right now. Here is Chuck at the line, up on the right side. The Rouge couldn't get it. There's an offside. Those playoff years, Gary, 74, 75. Somebody said you fell asleep in the bench. Say, wait a minute, Bernie. Good stop, Bernie. Get it on top another one, Bernie. The player gets by the forwards, up to defense. If it gets by the defense, up to Bernie. Well, take it. It's the way it's been with Milan. Now there you see the Canadians, the regulars who are on the sidelines, and the reasons why. Tomorrow, really into his ankle and a light skate that we had here yesterday. A beautiful play. Seven minutes and 45 seconds. The time showing on that clock, high above center. This is the first period. There's no score in the hockey game. But there has been the multitude of good scoring opportunities for the Canadians. One good scoring chance set by Maxwell for the North Stars. Robinson whips it around on the left side. Now up on the wing. It is Dupont. Dupont playing it to LaRouche. Napier is the other forward. North Stars get it to center. Here's Dupont going in. Three on one back to Dupont going in. He scores! Now the Canadians get the first goal and it's scored by number 26, Jeremy Dupont, who scored exactly one goal in the regular season. Gary, the North Stars get caught in a bad line change right there at the bottom of the screen. You know, that's something that they didn't do in the first two games. But look at that given goal and a two on one. And Dupont, he didn't make any mistake on this one. Of course, Malas, he was still watching Napier over the side. But so far tonight, the North Stars have made a few mistakes like that. Those two-on-ones and three-on-two breaks, which was very uncustomary in the first two games. Here's the announcement on the goal. Here's Payne coming in for a shot, and it's blocked by Engblom. Smith, McAdam, and Payne on for it. The North Stars. Napier and LaRouche getting the assist on that goal. Here's Paul Rangy Smith. He centered across the lip of the creek. Into the corner is Giles. Giles around the net. He takes the look. He centered it. It is Kane winding up for a shot. And Bobby LaRock is down. That was almost the goal. The shot that would tie it up. Now some pushing and shoving. But no damage done. Live from the Met Center in Bloomington, the Stanley Cup playoff. Never underestimate the world. For when you think you know history, he'll show you more. 
when you think you know his power. You find power to bear. When you think you know him well, the tiger, soul, fast, powerful, confident, possessive. Never underestimate an Evan Rose. <laughs> and Evan Rose. Face off for the right of Larocque. Montreal, one Minnesota, no score. 6.32, the time remaining in this, the opening period. There is Ganey from the corner. Gets it to the line, not out. And Langway finally feeds it into the center ice area and starts off. The pain in along the boards. Pain prevails. Shoots it in. Now the North Star is moving in, but the Canadians who start for off center again. He loses it to Payne. Payne coming in over the line with Smith. Here's Smith coming right in front. A shot, and it was kicked out by Laurent. Smith didn't have too much on it, but he had that good move, so the goalie had to be sharp. There's Anderson going in against Ganey. And the crowd reacting on that. They thought Ganey should have been penalized. Here's Englom working his way in on the right side. He's not going to be able to do much. He has lost his stick. There's a pass to Maxwell over on the right side to Anderson. Anderson's pass was gobbled up by Shingra, who knocked it back. And it's returned to the Canadian line. Getting it just in time was Ooh. Ooh with Lombard. Lack to Lombard. Ooh, right here. Right Looks back. And Velash is down. And he comes up with it. You know, Jack, a couple of things have happened here tonight. The reason is North Stars are not so effective. The Canadians are doing an excellent job of getting right on top of them, stopping them skating. Here's a chance for Poole, just lost the puck. Had a chance for the uh, rebound, but lost, covered up. Again, it's a good pass by Lambert. Just lost it in his skate. You know, anytime you get in front of a player and slow him down, he can't skate over you, so he's got to go around you. North Stars, in their own zone, they head man by puck to Zanussi. Zanussi, dropping it off, over the line, there's a shot right on by Kristoff. And LaRock looks very, very sharp, although he has not had very much to do in this first period. Shot down goal, 14-6 in favor of Montreal, here's number six for Minnesota. That was from far out, but LaRock still had a stretch to make that save, and you know, Bunny has, has played uh, the last couple of games at home. He's had a chance to watch, maybe study the shooters, where they shoot from. But he's been equal for the task, even though he hasn't had that much work. And I'm very impressed with the way this guy, Kristoff, number 28, went on leap with the shot that's very, very tall. There's he trying to get it back. And, of course, they'll do it over again. You know, these young, exciting highly proficient Minnesota hockey team has rekindled hockey interest in the Minnesota area to a degree comparable, indeed, beyond what it was, say, in 71. Now a two-on-one break. In over the line, there's their shot, the rebound! And Jarvis elected to take the shot. He had probably on the other side. Now Eve dancing in over the line. It goes to the corner. Jarkov's bumping with his man. Eve getting it back to the point. Greg Smith couldn't clear to the corner, and the Canadians again break up. A drop pass to Uhl. Uhl is jammed out of the play, and the North Stars take over from the side of the net. Kristoff giving it to Barrett. To the other side. Now Zanussi. His pass hit a leg. Eve's bumping the shot, jumpers up ended after the puck was shot into the Canadian zone. And we have four minutes and ten seconds remaining in the opening period. Montreal on a goal by Dupont, leading one to nothing. Now there is Shutt getting it out over the line. Smith trying to get it. Play getting a bit scrambly and a bit ragged here as they check rather closely. There's Payne down on the left side. He fired it off the corner board. McAdam is going in. And Robinson gets it ahead. Napier in over the line, making that move. And Napier couldn't catch up with it. And they score! Great pass. And it's Dougie Jarvis, as it was there, to fire it home. The Canadians are dead. They're still 
pouring it on there. But oh, what a good serve right here. Right through the middle. Off control of the puck, but now watch Jarvis. He's heading for the net. Right out in front, Jarvis gets a piece of it and just guides it into the net. And suddenly, the Canadians have jumped out to a 2 nothing lead. And I would think you'd have to say on the play, the overall play, they deserve to be leading in the hockey game, I would think, by about two goals. They're skating. You know, every single guy out there was reckless abandon. Oh, well, here they come back again. They're broken up at the Minnesota line. On the right side, it's Anderson. Anderson waits for his teammates to get on side. He's jabbed in on the board by Jarvis. Englund tried to send shut away. Shot is up and it inside the line by Spear. Maxwell clearing it ahead. The North Stars trying to reach it at center. And the Canadians with their great checking, keeping the North Stars off balance throughout most of this period. Canadians trying to break up another North Star play. They do. Up on the right side. Rouge going to the line. And a booming blast is kicked out by Milan. Canadians are getting in there. Now on the left side. Here's Langway. Langway. Offside with 2 minutes and 37 seconds to go in the period. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. 30, 40, 50. Now, the LWT series from North Star. Their style is born from function. Built to breathe as your feet breathe. Built to flex as your feet flex. Built light so your feet can fly. Feels the flare, souls that grip on impact. The LWT series from North Star. Keeping up with your feet. Chloe Sheets, Claude Ruel, facing back and forth behind the Canadian fence. And he has to be in the happiest frame of mind. He has been in so far in this series with a good enough lead near the end of the first period. Here's Kristoff. They're in on the board. Dean's going in there to help out, but he's tied up by Robinson, and The Rock has lost his stick. You know, playing at home, it's easy when you're going good and you get the lead. But you notice some of the crowd, they started to cheer a little bit because the North Stars were having problems out there. Now, that affects a young team like the North Stars. Of course, when they're in Montreal, they don't get that because the fans are busy on the Canadians. There's a shot total. And there is another say the loose puck. Pass goes off Robinson. It was intended for Kristoff. Canadians getting a through center right down into Minnesota territory. Now Zanussi rolled it into the corner, taking in there. Kristoff, Canadians taking over. Canadians doing a much better job getting the puck out of their own zone in this game. Now going in there and taking out of the play is Dupont. It was he who scored the first goal for Montreal. Lombert goes after his man. Bobby Smith couldn't get anywhere. Lombert clearing it back in. Frazier, oh, looking. Deeney has come off the bench. He got in front of the net. But the North Stars take over with a minute and a half left in the opening period. It's bounced in by the North Stars. And that's their signal to make changes. There is Giles, the sturdy little character who is outstanding in the games in Montreal. Smith turning at the line. Ahead it goes. Knocked in by Payne. The Canadians in there quickly to get possession. And they clear it back to center. There's Giles again. Hitting his man Payne. Payne coming to the line and he's broken up. And less than a minute to go in the opening period. On the north side line, they couldn't get anywhere. Now Payne beating it ahead to Smith. Off his stick. Montreal with Napier penetrating at the line, trying to get in rather deeply. Just takes it, he centers it. There's a shot from the right side by LaRouche. And scrambling again at the short side was Malage. It moves to the side of the net, and Malage is covering up. Well, Malos continues to have a lot of pressure against them. 
Well around the league. There in the first year of the Islanders. A goal by Trottier and Tonelli. Mark Cox has replied to Boston. They're ahead. Buffalo, Steely and Dudley have scored. That's in Chicago. And we still don't have a score. The Philadelphia Flyers at New York Rangers. And for this face-off to the left of Milage, the defense for the Canadians in over the line. LaRouche, Napier, and Shutter the forward. Anglum and Robinson on the point. Minnesota getting the draw. Captain Smear leading this attack. They'd love to get a goal before the end of this period. Smear slapping it in, and they raced in there to get it. Robinson comes up with it. After the head, Jesse is shot over on the other side. Anglon, Anglon twisting and turning. There's the shot of the big rebound, and it's cleared into the center ice area. That is going to be the end of the first period, an excellent period for Montreal. Well, the Canadians came out skating, as Quadrell said, we've got to take it to them. No let up. Every single guy that goes out there, they did it. They caused a lot of turnovers, and they had four chances where they had three on two and two on one, one resulting in a goal. And so the score at the end of the first period, Montreal two, Minnesota nothing. Down, down. What would you do if they just sold the last home to go to? The problem with this goes to beat so many folks. Yeah, I know what you mean. Would you like to dance? Oh, would I? Hi there. Yeah, I join you? For what? I sold them to my friend here. Where's my friend? I got a new move for you. So the golden goat for it? Oh, okay, okay. Put it together like this. Can I hold your golden? Yeah. You don't boogie for just any beer. But if it's a smooth tasting golden, you go for it. Amazing how fast the new stuff catches on. Yeah. In 1929, this Niagara generating station was the largest in the world. Generators built in Peterborough by Canadian General Electric and turbines built in Montreal by Dominion Engineering, a CGE company with pilots. Today's Grand Coulee project in Washington State uses turbines engineered by Dominion and the world's most powerful hydro generators built in Canada by CGE. Progress for people from Canadian General Electric. Is the Chick Outrick, the ultimate razor. We interrupt this commercial to introduce the new Outrick Trial Razor. Frame pivoting head to keep the twin blades at the right cutting angle. Frame exclusive push button cleaner to push open stubble out from between the blades. But the Outrick Trial Razor costs only $1.99 or less. So hurry, this offer is for a limited time only. For close, smooth shaves like never before. Chick Outrick. And Outrick Trial, the ultimate razor. Bit of a turnaround at the Met Center in Bloomington as the Canadians finally get to Joe Malosh, although it looked for a while they were going to be totally frustrated again. But the Canadians off to an excellent start in this hockey game tonight, and they have a 2-0 lead. The goal scores for Montreal, a couple of fellows who don't get too many goals. Herman Dupont, who had just won all year for the Canadians from Lelouch and Zingra, at 12.49, catching the North Stars in a bit of a line change, and then Doug Jarvis from Mark Napier at 16.27. The Canadians dominating the play, 18-7, the shots on goal. I oh, goodness, they had a lot of chances they could have added to the lead, some good scoring chances, Conley on a breakaway, what have you. A lot is excellent again in the net for Minnesota. Just to review those other town scores for a minute, the Islanders leading Boston 2-1 to one after 1, and Buffalo leading Chicago 2 nothing. also after the first period. One of the Canadians who is not playing tonight, and he was in uniform the other night, Captain Terry Savard is here. There's a king down the stairs with Jacques Plant. He was going on the French telecast, and he said the Canadians came out hard. I don't know how you describe it, but you fellas have a pretty good picture. Well, you know, when you uh, you have uh, over 100 goals uh, in the Senate, in the Senate, uh, you have to use your other players that you, you haven't used so far because a lot of guys look tired. A lot of guys have to play double shifts in the last two months uh, uh, to replace uh, the injured players. 
And uh, yeah, I'm a guy like Norm Cohn, uh, like slow thing this afternoon. I gotta use that guy more because there's not too many guys who can score goals in the club right now. He scored only two goals in 60 minutes against Milos. And uh, a guy like Cohn, he's been a third player of, in, the, in his last two years here in, in Montreal. And uh, I would say in the practice, this guy is the best player in our club for the fucking game. I thought that the Canadians could not finish third to begin with, they looked pretty good. Well, uh, for us, you know, uh, there's not too so many ways to go. Uh, we have to win both games. No, never. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> and uh, we're, it come, we're almost against the wall. And uh, I think if we win the game tonight, everybody was saying that before the game. If we can win this one, I think the pressure will change in. Right. The attitude going into the game. A, a lot of fellows over there, sir, who are not used to being down, not accustomed to being down. Two games in this one, that's what they must be a little confusing, maybe. Well, for us, it's, uh, you know, I haven't seen that for, for a long time, uh, particularly to nothing, and uh, we've been uh, so uh, unlucky in the quarterfinals uh, in my career. Uh, I don't know, we saw we got beat twice against the Rangers and I was in the quarterfinals and one against Buffalo. But, uh, you know, we're missing so many great hockey players like Lafleur. Lafleur would have been, uh, would have been a great player for us against Minnesota, more than he would have been against Boston and so because that's a student club and uh, what we need now is to be the team, right? It's the team. So uh, hopefully uh, the North Star looks very, very good in the first period. Both games are played against us and uh, I hope we can see that through the, uh, through the whole game. And for that, uh, we'll have to use the uh, four line once in a while. We, we, we just can go with 12 or 13 players. Do you think that is what had the effect in the first two games, that maybe the fellows, the game, the Robinson, the Reggie Hills were just a little bit too tired? Definitely. To me, uh, I yeah. think those guys were just too tired. We just can't afford to, uh, let's say, have two uh, families in a row, and uh, we have to, to use uh, Jamie and Jarvis, uh, you know, uh, multiple uh, faces, so they'll be just dead in the first period. Sir, just a very quick question. You re-injured your ankle yesterday in the state. Is there any chance for this vital play in the I would think so. Uh, it's not very bad what I have, but uh, it has nothing to do with the bone, just the muscle, and uh, hopefully if it can go through the stage, uh, I think it's going to be back in good shape. Okay, sir, thank you very much for stopping by. Sir, so the Canadians who lead the North Star 2-0, Craig Hartsburg for the minute. Sir, North Star standing by, and Stanley Cup 80 will continue. Then you come on. <laughs> If you're looking at you, when you're going down the street, and you can't find a song, if you're looking at you, you can find a broken heart, or a study in a song. If your house is had enough, if you're going to be stuck, if you're looking at you, if you're starting to do, and you're going to be stuck, if you're looking at you. Now, from Ever Ready, the Energizer. Energy Store Substance 80. When ordinary carbon batteries are dead and gone, the Energizer lives on. In chores like this, the Sea Science Energizer runs 790% as long as ordinary batteries. 790% for this new electronic world. The Energizer. Longer life. Spread your wings in the new 1980 Thunderbirds. Now, a new contemporary size that displays its elegant heritage wherever you look. With its new size and new 4.2-liter engine, this Thunderbird offers improved fuel economy. And there's a new option. The first automatic overdrive transmission built in North America for even better highway fuel economy. So spread your wings in a new dimension of space. Thunderbird, a better idea for the 80s. The Mark II by Arrow. A tapered shirt that fits you perfectly, because only the Mark II is tailored to the contours of your body, to the dark here and here, has sleeves the length you choose, and if you wish, a patented Mark collar, the only collar shaped at the tone of your neck. That's the Mark II, the perfect tapered shirt. Fittingly, made only by Arrow. Here at the Sports Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, after one period, the Montreal Canadiens lead the Minnesota North Star 2-0 in goals by Norman Dupont and Doug Jarvis. Perhaps not the best time to interview one of the fine young players on the Minnesota hockey team, Craig Hartsburg. He's the first man is with me. Craig, uh, right off the bat, a comment from you from a Minnesota standpoint on the first period. 
Well, you know, the majority came up flying, but they really flat, I thought, they were good, you know. Good different team and then we played Montreal. And if we were to play a different team too, we're going to have to come out second, third, and especially with two player on the end. The ovation, the atmosphere, the whole team when this game started, maybe could that have almost worked a little bit different, but it gets a little more upside than normal. I think it, you know, it might have, you know, we got a lot of young guys, and I've never seen an ovation like that before. And, you know, I know the fans are behind us and stuff, and it could have hurt us, but, you know, we're just going to have to put that behind us and go out and play better. Two colors are Shocked everybody, certainly. Uh, certainly, the Canadians by winning both games in Montreal. You had a day in between to pause, think about it, and uh, exactly what had happened. But what did you think? What was it? Well, you know, obviously we were very happy. You know, we were we were confident going into Montreal, but I don't think anybody ever thought we'd win two. We figured we would come up with one, and you know, we came up with two. We were just, you know, just unbelievable happy, and uh, you know, I, I think maybe. We might have been thinking about the last two games instead of tonight or uh, yesterday, but I think we all been found out and we have to are not the next to Glenn Strongmore and Murray Oliver, is that going to make it you fellas? Are they just too high and get carried away? Yeah, you know, you know, they didn't want to get in talks and stuff. And, and we've got a lot of young guys and I think that that can happen, but I don't think we're overconfident at all. You turned pro a year ago, as one of the football underage seniors of the Birmingham and the World Hockey Association. Obviously, an adjustment. Did you find yourself having to make another kind of adjustment coming from there to the next one? Well, there's definitely a difference between the WHA last year and the NHL, you know. Everything just to step up real fast and, you know, just good experience the last year. You know. What about the fact that when you come to a team like this, too? It sounds like I wasn't expecting that, for example. But if you ask him for advice, or put the kids aside, and say, hey, I guess I'm getting my job, you're on your own. Well, you know, Freddie's one of the older players, and, you know, he was just great to me, the training camp stuff. He, he helped me, and, you know, he's just, just like a, a best friend. And the first time I met him, he was just great to me. That's one of the reasons for North Carolina this year with the blend there. It was a special year. You've had some interesting situations. Oh, you played in the All-Star game. You know, the team representative scored a goal. There you were. Gordy Howe, Gila Fleur, and the ovation for Howe. That had to be put now. I was, I'll never forget it, you know, it my first all-star and stuff, and it was great. Now, you go into another sort of a, a big moment, the playoffs. Have you found it to be your first playoff as a pro hockey Have you found it to be a lot different for pressure than the Well, it's, you know, it's a lot more fun in the radio season stuff, other than so intensified, and, you know, it's just a lot more fun to play, and it's great. That's a good way to keep it. The Canadians always like to play in the playoffs because they have fun. Your father played pro hockey. You'll be married and you mentioned he was a senior and then Stromwell and turned out to be your first. Yeah, they grew up together in Hamilton, Ontario, and you know, they always talk to me and dad goes to game. Okay, you're in a hockey tight family. Are there a lot of encouragement to win really the kids and keep it going and maybe make the uh, career to pro hockey? Oh, definitely. I think, you know, the whole family, got my dad, my parents, my mother, and my brothers and sisters, they're always behind me. When did you make it? <laughs> I ever since I was small, I always wanted to be an NFL player. All right, let's look ahead now, just briefly, if we can, to the second period. Uh, what do you think the message is going to be in there from Coach Glenn, and how do you feel about it? Well, I think we're going to have to tighten up a lot defensively, and we have way too many CMPs, and, you know, we're just going to have to come back and play the way we played in Montreal, more or less, and, you know, we play, play checking and, you know, wait for a break. One thing you got to remember is you have to build the other. You know, he's just played unbelievable, but he's always going to stop for a minute. Craig, congratulations on an excellent six season in the Thanks very much. Craig Hartford and the Minnesota North Stars. I guess the Canadians leading the hockey game after one period by a score of 2 0. Coming up next in the intermission, a special feature on Canadian Coach Paul Duell. And we'll return with the Stanley Cup playoffs in just a moment. What makes Seiko the world's best selling quality sports watch? The ultra thin elegance of Seiko's classic styling. Or is it the rich perfection of every brilliant beat? Search in quality court. Time after time after. Sit back and take a quick look at the John Deere lab. After a closer look, see your John Deere dealer.
calm, unhurried patience that rules us all. It takes time to appreciate it. But all for most, it's the time. What are you going to check in? The Canadians leading the Minnesota North Star shootout after the first period in this third game of their Stanley Cup best of seven quarter final series. Norman Dupont and Doug Jarvis doing the scoring. This past season, for only the second time in over 40 years, the Montreal Canadiens made a coaching change after the season began. Claude Joel took over, and when the season was over, Claude Joel had been the number one story as far as the Canadians have been concerned during the course of the year. So right now, special feature on this very unique man who is now coaching the Canadians. Montreal Canadiens lost six games in a row, something that hadn't happened in 40 years. By then, coach Bernie Jeffreyon had resigned only four months after being named to the job. But perhaps the club's biggest losses occurred before the season even started. Scotty Bowman, the Canadiens coach since 1971, left to join the Buffalo Sabres. Ken Dryden, five-time winner of the Vesna Trophy for the best goaltender in the National Hockey League, retired to practice law. And Jacques Lemaire, one of the club's most valuable players, moved to Switzerland to play in a league with a little less pressure. The net result being the Canadians were on the skids and needed a leader. Enter Claude Ruel, Bowman's and Jeffreyon's loyal assistant, and the man who took the Canadians to the Stanley Cup in 1969. The reason why I came in is because I had to do something for the owner Griffin because people just realized that a guy like me and Ronnie Caron have been working all our life since we've been with the Canadians to go and get those hockey players and work to develop them. And without the Tom, I was the youngest man in the Montreal Canadian organization who coached before, and somebody had to step in, and it was me. We had basically had uh, had a, a, a team that had been coached by, I'd say 80% of our team was coached by one player only, or one coach only, and, and I don't think we changed our system too much, but the direction that we had been getting wasn't there, and uh, Claude was a little closer to the hearts of the, hearts of the players. He was used to what players killed penalties, what players were on the power play. Uh, he knew the capabilities and the capacities of all the players, whether it was in practice or not. I think in Jeffreyon's case, it was just a lack of knowledge of not knowing the players. I don't think he, he had seen some of the players play so much and practice so hard, and uh, I think he thought he was pushing us to the limit where we weren't getting that. When Ruel took over the range of the Canadians on December 13th of this season, he said it was never his dream to coach. But according to his players, coaching is something he does extremely well. For myself, I think uh, I would do anything for him. I know a lot of other guys would do too. Does he have a method, a science for what he does? Is it different than, than other coaches? Have fun on the ice. That's the main thing, and just work hard. And uh, just keep working hard, things are going to happen. And most of the time, it goes your way. He's, uh, starts from the checking aspect of it and goes from there. He, uh, he wants to play very very tight defense, and if there's any situations where it would be like a 50-50 situation as to whether you would go on offense or defense, he would choose to, to, to you, uh, take the defensive uh, part of the game first. And uh, it, it works uh, very well for us. I think uh, we got this club alive that uh, we were in our first half of the season kind of half discipline, half in shape. That's all uh, past now, and I think we'll just uh, sit a tremendous job. Game and practice are the same, because if you practice well, you're going to play good in the game. If you don't practice well, you're going to have all kinds of bad habits. Uh, the way he's doing it, you know, he said, well, you know, why don't you do this this way instead of doing it the other way, you know? It might help you, you know. He's not like that to push you and uh, to tell you what to do, but he's there just to, to make sure, you know, the thing we, we do on the ice, we try to make it as uh, the best as possible. Even now, after the Canadiens' recent 24-game unbeaten streak, Ruel won't take credit for the team's turnaround. He prefers to give his players all the glory. But without Claude Ruel, it's unlikely the Canadiens would have recovered from their dismal record at the Christmas break to finish yet another season with over 100 points and a shot at the club's fifth consecutive Stanley Cup. Are you superstitious about anything? I'm super sick when I'm coaching if I get success with something like he's putting on. Pro Duel, quite a story this year on the Montreal hockey team, and he has done quite a job after taking over a very difficult situation. Well, he is a little bit happier right now as far as the Canadians and the North Stars are concerned. His team ahead 2 nothing here in Bloomington after the first period. Now up to the broadcast booth, he's Danny and Jim.
Well, Dick, as everybody would agree, I suppose, who has witnessed the game here or saw it on television, that, that first period was outstanding for the Montreal Canadiens. They were just as impressive in that period as the North Stars were in, say, five of the six periods played in Montreal. So, Gary Dornhofer, what is Coach Don Moore going to say to his team? He probably has already said it. Say something to shake the shackles that are being applied by the Canadians. Well, before, Danny, we talked about experience, uh, okay? Experience only is a factor when you're behind. Now the North Stars are behind. I think he's got to settle down some of the young kids. Uh, you know, the Canadians took the skating away from the North Stars, and the way they did that, they got in front of them. They, uh, they cut down the center ice area where uh, the centers weren't able to control the puck and set up the wing. Now, Sonmore, evidently, he's got to get that puck in the zone. He's got to get the wingers moving and apply some pressure. Another thing what the Canadians are doing so well you know, you can't always make that perfect play to come out of your zone. So whenever, when they don't have that play up the center, they're just firing that puck around the board, and the winger is up high, he's just deflecting it by the defenseman. But, uh, you know, the Canadians, that's the best I've seen them skate in a long time. Well, you know, you alluded to it, but I think maybe with the greater detail that we have the time. That ball's one part of their game tonight that stands in this excellent stead and got them in trouble in Montreal inside their own field. Well, there's no question. Uh, you know, the first two games in Montreal, the North Stars didn't give up any of those three-on-twos and two-on-ones. Tonight, they made a bad line change. That, that resulted uh, in a giveaway. Six occasions tonight, Danny. Count them, six. You know, they, they were caught on a three-on-two or a two-on-one, and on one occasion, the Canadians scored. So evidently, I think it starts right at the far end. You know, the North Stars sent two men in, one guy deep in the slot. Now, his responsibility is when they lose possession of the puck to pick up a winger and stay with him right to the zone. So he was getting in there a little too deep, and that's where all the problems started. That's why they were breaking out. Well, I see that the officials are back on the ice, and it should be a rather, rather interesting uh, second period. So from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, Stanley Cup 80 continues in just a moment. We saw in the first period, Montreal got goals from DuPont and Jarvis, and they outshot Minnesota 18 to 7. Big first period for the Montreal Canadiens. But you can expect a fired up Minnesota team in this second period. Now, the next game in this series will be played right here at the Met Center tomorrow night, and it'll be on the entire network of CBC. That'll be 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. In other words, 7.30 here, Eastern Time, 8.30. Well, the big question now, Danny, is number one, can the North Stars gain their composure? Number two, can the Canadians keep up with this pressure that they had? You know, they faltered in both games in the third period, and it's up to Quadrell now to play everybody, get everybody on that ice, not to tire out their main guns, which has happened in the past. Well, is there a tendency or a temptation, even as early in the second period with a 2 nothing lead, perhaps to play it a little more cautiously? I'm talking about Montreal, and that could get them into trouble. No, absolutely not. Ruel was uh, very emphatic. Uh, he said, we have to go out to the North Stars for three periods. Every single guy. I would rather see my guy take shorter shifts. Stay out there for 30 seconds if they have to. But, you know, make those legs go. Get on top of the North Stars all the time. There's a, an exemplification of the old college spirit, if we may use that term. Danny, you can't play this game without enthusiasm and emotion. And if you haven't got that, then you just better get out. Both teams here, they have a lot of pride, the will to win, and we're seeing it in the series so far. Okay, and for Montreal, we have Jarvis at center. There's Sharko and Ganey on the wing. And Minnesota going with the big guy at center, Spitz. What a hockey player he is. And the cat and then Payne, we don't have to tell you about how productive these two fellows are. Now Minnesota going to the attack and they clear it into Montreal territory. The Rock, feeding into the corner, picked up there by McCadden. 
Here's Smith. Smith behind the net, playing it off the board. Canadians whipping this from the corner, comes to the point. Giles keeping it in. The North Stars, their strategy and the plan of attack here, get on top of the Canadians. And the Canadians fail to clear it out again. Now they get it to center, led by Jarvis with Sasha. Jarvis shooting it off the leg of Giles. North Stars coming back. Robinson bounced his man at the Minnesota line. And that was Big Smith. Every time I see Larry Robinson hit somebody like he just hit Bobby Smith, I think of Terry O'Reilly, sir, because like running into a redwood tree. Uh, I experienced that one time. I didn't want to mention it, Gary. Yeah. You know, the, the Canadian defense, they're not pulling out. They're standing right up the line. And of course, when you got your head down, that's the result. Kick Irvin late in April, the last time we were here for a playoff game. Canadians are leading 3-2. Minnesota player went in and put the puck in the net. Everybody thought it was a goal, but the green light had gone on. Who was the player? Ted Hampton. Uh, this man is incredible. Who did I spend half an hour with talking to this morning at the practice? Ted Hampton. That's <laughs> how <laughs> so you were discussing that very thing. Now the Canadians into Minnesota territory. Kristoff clearing it ahead. Eames cutting it on the right side after taking the pass back to the news. Now at center, it's flashed off the boards by Barrett. And again, the North Stars into Montreal territory. Kristoff puts the center and along the boards. They fight for it again. They flash away. Bromley comes up with it and rolled into center. Barrett is tied up along the boards. Couldn't get a shot away against Poole. Good move there by Anglon. Anglon in over the line. Fired him. That was a hot shot. And the loss covered up on his doorstep. Was lost there. Tonight's Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. You drive a pickup for a van, you probably saw this newspaper. It says Ford, number one in fuel economy rate. Six in V8, number one for all North American built pickups and vans. The best pickup, the best van. Based on Transport Canada approved test methods. Now these tough Ford trucks have been the best selling pickups and vans in Canada for a long time now. Their ratings in today's gas price will be even more popular. See them all at a Ford or Mercury dealer. So the face-off is to the left of the lot. LaRouche, Napier, and Shutt. North Stars with Young at center. Anderson and McCarthy on the wings. And now the North Stars speed into that center right area. Spears over the line, goes to the corner. Jingra nailed him in on the boards, and Robinson has it. At the line, the North Stars in there again. McCarthy takes the shot, and it goes off the stick of Robinson, and a penalty about to be assessed against the Montreal Canadiens. A bad moment for the Canadians. They coughed up the puck, and then at the same time, Drew... Oh, wait a minute. We have both penalty doors open. Jingra has gone. And the North Star penalty door is now closed, so the Canadians are short-handed. Well, there it is, right in front of the net. Gingra, he holds them down. It was a hooking call. So you talk about how important this next goal is. It's very important for the North Star. They got their big unit out there, guys that have been carrying the Minnesota North Stars offensively in this series, Smith, McAdam, and Payne. So the North Stars on the power play. Robinson with that huge reach. Here's the note to Gady. Gady backhands it down the ice. So the North Stars, who has been rather ineffectual offensively so far in this hockey game, have an opportunity with the odd man advantage to go all out offensively to get a goal that would put them back in towards the Canadians, who are on top two to nothing. Now Robinson. Robinson rolls the back to the line. Langway gave it to Robinson again out to Ganey. Puck is loose at center. Now Hartsburg is over the line. Works to the right side into the corner. Back to Hartsburg. Into Smith. It shoots it. And Robinson got in front of it. Over off the boards into the corner. Kane is taken in on the boards by Langway. Now it comes back. Here's Hartsburg. Hartsburg falls and so does Ganey. And Ganey clears it down the ice. There was nobody near Hartsburg when that puck came up. 
but he just couldn't get into a proper position to fire a booming flash at the rock. Here's Big Smith leading a four-man Minnesota attack over the line, intercepted at the line by Crumbley. In behind the net is Young, off the board. Here's Crumbley chasing it. He took that pass, couldn't hold it from Ray Cahoon. Two to nothing, Montreal. Kristoff is in over the line, steps into the corner, over to the far side, and it's back into the center right area with exactly 20 seconds left in the penalty. Langway played it back into the corner. Now comes in front of the Canadians, apparently are going to kill off this penalty in a very successful manner. Tomblay almost got picked up with Young as they were going off. Penalty has expired. Minnesota back in. They fire it around the net. Now back to the point it goes to Bird. In for Kristoff on the other side. And Glove shooting to center. And the North Star is coming back and they are called on the offside. Second power play chance for Minnesota and they fail to get a shot on goal in either case. This is Stanley Cup 80 from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. You gotta have heart, you gotta have heart, 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 this is all the crew of the great day, and there's only one way to start. Open my hands, open my hands, I'm heart, it's got heart, open my hands, I'm heart, 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 he
up on the right side. Kingra bumped his man, knocked him into the board, and that was number eight, Anderson. At center, Lambert couldn't get him. Anderson spinning around outside the line, lost his balance, finally cleared it in. Kingra chasing it on the left side, rolled it to center. In over the line, the puck goes toward the corner. And Montreal, after shooting it in, making changes while the play goes on. Four checking. And Jarvis is everywhere tonight. He's on the ice again. He's the story story in the big sense of the word with two goals. There's Jarvis back in his own zone. Gave it to Anglop. Canadians late on the body again there with Ganey digging out a solid check. Ganey dropping it back to Jarvis. And it's called on the offside. With the score, Montreal 3, Minnesota nothing. This is Stanley Cup 80. A Quaker State helps cars last. See that? It's a sign of quality engine protection. Quaker State motor oil protection. That's the reason I use Quaker State. Best selling motor oil in North America. Quaker State's the only oil we've ever used in our truck. The way I figure it, if you've got something good going for you, stay with it. Quaker State helps the cars last. And so. Face off outside, the North Stars blue We are into the second period. She has moved rather solidly into the second period, having played seven minutes and 24 seconds. Montreal in front, three to nothing, two goals in the first, and a Jarvis goal here in the second. Up on the left side comes Sardik across the line, lost it, goes back after it. In behind the net it goes from the corner. It's cleared on the right side to center by Langway. Back in, and that is an offside against Minnesota. Now the Philadelphia Flyers have scored and taken a one-nothing lead first period over the Rangers. That came a late start because of the circus, always because of the circus, it's way outside in New York. The Islanders now ahead of Boston, four to two. Benelli, Trotsky, Ward, and Mason scoring for New York. Marcotte and McNabb for Boston. And Buffalo still two nothing leaders over Chicago and goals by Sealing and Dudley. And the faceoff between LaRouche and Eves. There's a shot by Zanussi. Off the glass, back to the line. North Eves trying to pick it up. And the Canadians pounce on it and they lock it into the center ice area over the line. Napier carries. He feeds it in behind the net. Shot try to center it. Up it goes to Greg Smith into the center right area. Two North Stars. They're in over the line. There's Eve. Eve takes a look. He fired it in front and the Canadians are there as they have been consistently in their own court throughout this game. They got it and they shot it down the ice. That is nice. That's Rod Langway shot it down the ice. He and Mark Napier both on the ice right there. They played for Glenn Sonmore with Birmingham for WHA. Bobby Smith, number 15, last year's Rookie of the Year. And you know, you talk about the prolific output of McAdam and Payne on the wing. Smith has 19 games with a fractured ankle this year. So those two fellas did very well with Bobby and uh, without him. Well, you notice here in the second period, because the Canadians are skating so well, the North Stars, who throughout the first two games, were challenging at the blue line. Now they're back again, and the Canadians are taking advantage of that to get the zone. Romley firing it off the board. Dropping down on the left side and cutting into the center of the blue line was Kendra. Down there. Dropped the pass, he's headed to the right side. Ray Jandul, a weak backhander. Persistent force checking now by the Canadians. Brings the ball to face off in Minnesota territory. Gary, exactly what you were saying right there. One thing it's also done for Minnesota as compared to the games of Montreal, the passing is Yes, it is. They're, they're very rigid. You know, Ray John Hool this morning in practice, boy, was he getting the guys going. You know, line rush after line rush. He was hollering and screaming, let's get our act together, and it seems to have taken over tonight. There's Trombley. He's shoved off the puck by Smear. Lombard is chasing it. Max will fail to clear it out. Jingra firing it back in there. And here's Tim Young. Young rolled it into the center ice area. And this tremendous crowd of over 16,000 now getting a feeling that they're being caught up in that old web of frustration as the Canadians are dominating the game. Now, Lombard over 
Another of those who takes a shot. Another shot on a slot. Bromley took the other one, a young slot. The Ooh shot was stopped by Millage. Down the ice it goes, and Minnesota calls for ice. Stanley Cup 80 will continue in just a moment. Canadian Tire has the tires you need. Radial tires, snow tires, off-road tires, small tires, truck tires, tractor tires. We made our name selling quality tires at sensible prices. Backed by our five-year road hazard warranty. We can fit just about every kind of car or truck with the right tire at the right price. We can do it. It's people like you. Canadian Tire. They line up for the face-off to the left of Milaj. There you see, back of the line, Engbaum and Langway. The North Star, Giles, in behind the net. He had a big goal in that second game in Montreal, and as we mentioned earlier, the little ball of number two has played outstanding hockey in this series. There he is taking a look over his shoulder at the oncoming Canadian, and the play has stopped. You know, another thing, Danny, that becomes so very important now, since, since the uh, North Stars aren't putting that pressure, as you see the, the game that'll be coming up tomorrow, that's the 8.30 start, Eastern Standard Time. You know, the long pass becomes so important. We noticed uh, last time, Robinson threw that long pass and resulted in a three-on-two. And now the halfway mark in the second period has been reached. North Stars not able Come out of their own zone in this game with that tick tack toe type of costume. So there you have the Canadians in there. There's an example of the way they are forward checking. Ganey and Chartraw. Now Ganey stopping Young Hand. Giles will start it. He has some skating room on the left side. He pumps that shot in there. McCann the weak backhander. And LaRock is covering up to get a face off to his left. I was going to check the shots on Norway. Things are on electronically. They got fouled up. 23 to 9. There it is. Overall, Bunny LaRock making his second playoff start since 1974. Started and played very well in the game in Hartford a week ago last night. The pitcher down there. Minnesota, everybody up for the face off. But the Canadians start out into the center ice area. Napier, he has shot with him. He's just trying to pick it up. Napier fires it and is stopped. In behind the net, Kristoff. Kristoff coming out. Good moves by Kristoff, and he's checked by Shuck. It's picked up. In over the line. He's into the corner. He's around the net, trying to center, and he's still with it. Back it goes, and then hops over. Barrett's pick at the point. Barrett clearing it out over the line. Napier steps in there with LaRouche Brandon and a call on the offside. The Canadians here are looking for a face-off right there, but Minnesota wants it down the end. Montreal leading 3-0 live from the Met Center in Bloomington, the Stanley Cup playoff. What's it take to brew a great light beer? for Montreal, 8.47, the time remaining in the second period. Romley getting it loose, Romley fired it in front, and Ooh was checked. As Zanucci stopped his shot, and he's lifting a bit, they clear it to the side of the net. North Stars hard pass here with Robinson, forced outside the line now, and up 
up on the left side is the new seat. He's going to the players' bench. He stopped a wicked shot. Now the North Star's coming in. There's a shot! And came down. There's the save there on Anderson. That looked like the first goal for Minnesota. Robinson over on the other side. Long there, took a pass to Shingla. He dumped it into the corner. In there goes Steer. Steer passing it to the line. Out over the line, Anderson. He lost it. Langley clearing it down on the right side. Steer lays it to the other wing. 3 to nothing, Montreal, and now the North Stars can't get anywhere again at center. Here's LaRouche coming in. Steer is watching him. Steer jams him in on the board. LaRouche gets it, he centers it. And Minnesota, three of them at center. They hit the Montreal line. McCarthy has it, he rolled it right in front. Good back checking by number 31 of the Canadian, Napier. In Young. Up from the corner, Gainey doing the board checking here. It's at the line, swept up on the right side. McCarthy is coming in against Langway. Langway upended McCarthy. At center, Jarvis. Jarvis hands it off to Shurtra. There's a shot, and it was blocked by Child. Young on the other side, chopping against Langway. North Stars clear at the center. Langway laying it in on the right side. Kyle stops it out to McCarthy. At center to Hartford, over the line. Here's the shot. Hard shot, but he was wide by three or four feet. Now Minnesota coming back in on the left side. Kane doesn't get anywhere. Number 26, Kane against Genie. Now Giles takes a look, drives it over on the right side for McAdam. And Ganey backhands to the center. Sharkov. Lobbed it into the corner. Off the bench comes Trombley, along with Long Bear and Poole. They moved in there to do the four checking. They force the North Stars back. They help him. Down into the corner. Payne. And he has been back to the Canadians. Canadians trying to center it out. Giles takes his man. Locks him to the other. Gary mentioned earlier in the show the Canadians looking for perhaps some short shifts. Will draw out preferring that. That's exactly what they're doing in the second period. Dick, the last three shifts, the Canadians changed line three times in a minute and a half. The newsie took a, a blast from Jindra right on the ankle. And he's trying to walk it off. Well, we know he can shoot the puck, and when you get it in that ankle area, there is much protection there. That's part of it. Gary, how are your skills at blocking shots? Non-existent. <laughs> Actually, the best thing to do for a forward is when the defenseman has the puck, is skate as fast as you can at him. Don't try and block it. Just skate at him with your motion, and when he does get the shot away, run into him. Perhaps it'll hit you, but not it'll go by. Now Eve from behind the net. Drifts off is on one wing. Young Hands is out there. Drifts off, clearing it in. Young hands, James Robinson in on the boards. Canadians get rid of it and shoot it down to Minnesota territory. Greg Smith, stays in behind the net. Now he circles, doesn't go in behind from the corner. Robinson blocks his man. Greg Smith comes down, hits the Montreal line, works into the corner. Smith puts on the brake, tries to center it. Gingra sending Tromley away on the right side. Cruising in on the other wing. Lombard, Tromley still with it. In on the board. He's jammed against the board by Barrett. And the play is stopped with five minutes and eight seconds left in the second period. Three to nothing, Montreal over to the Sutter. Here, here's a young man I know you admire. He had a great scoring chance in the first period. But Tromley, among the Canadians tonight, helping them control the board against the North Star. Well, that's so very important. You can always tell a guy how he plays on the road. Everybody can play at home, but it's what you do on the road when you go in the opposing team's building, how you work the corners, you know, how you back check, probably that type of player. It is Spear from behind the net. Now Young is reaching for a pass on the left side. Works his way into the center ice area and then lost it to LaRouche. LaRouche over the line, the pass to Anderson. Deflected it back down the ice. Angelo over on the far side. 
Langway lost it to Young. Here's the pass that goes to McCarthy. The shot and is grabbed by LaRock. Englund having difficulty twisting and turning against Anderson. Englund now gets some skating room into the center ice area, cleared it in. Digging in there doggedly is Chuck trying to tie up Maxwell. Chuck loses his balance. Now from the side of the net, finally Chuck fell. Here is Captain Spear again. At center, rolling it in. However, instead of going in there trying to get it, the North Stars decide to make some changes. The Canadians bring it up, they lose it again and get it a second time. It's LaRouche coming down with Chuck. LaRouche with that head fake, he fakes it again. Steered it off to the corner. And Montreal will make changes. Gainey, Chartra, and Jarvis coming off. Three minutes and 48 seconds of time remaining in the second period. Here's Big Smith in over the line. It's grabbed off by Shingrock, cleared out Gainey. Gainey cut by his tag. In over the line with Jarvis and Chartra. A pass to the other side. Smith circling. Smith coming out over the line. The pass goes to Payne with the cabin. Gainey is there. He was back checking feverishly, got it over to Jarvis. He was sent flying by Giles. And that little fellow checked very hard. In on the line, Payne. He jammed in on the boards after shooting it. Robinson checked him. Now Gainey. Gainey from the corner to Jindra. Circling is Jarvis. Jarvis lobbed it to the corner of the Canadians. Rushed to the bench to make changes. Here's Hartsburg, took his eye off the puck, and he almost lost it against Lambert. Lost it to Tromley, over it goes, the shot from the far side by Ool. Ool getting it again and off. Lambert's stick, there's a penalty coming up here. Tripping down on the ice in front of the net. The Montreal Canadian player, Tromley. Uh, Bobby Smith is going to get the game. Live from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, the Stanley Cup playoffs. In the Kensington Market area of Toronto, many people have English only as a second language. So the local Scotia Bank has several people on staff who speak at least one other language besides English. Because whenever a community has a special need, our goal is to see that it's met. That's the Scotia Bank, just around the corner. Well, when you're tired, sometimes you take bad penalties. You'll see Bobby Smith as the play breaks out. That's not it right there. That just shows Lambert getting in front of the net. But Smith is in the penalty box. Now it's back to Engblom. He hands it to Trombley, the shot is blocked. In on the board, third. He could have cleared it down the ice, but he lost his stick. It's rather important, that stick, when you're playing this game of hockey. Back to the point, it goes to Langley. Scores! And the Canadian making it 4 nothing. Did that hit anything or anybody on the way in? I don't believe so, but Langway got a shot. You look at the time he had to shoot it. Nobody close to him, but you notice. The, the scramble in front of the net. Lambert is in front, causing the screen. There you see the path of it, right into the corner. That's something the Canadians weren't doing the first game. It's getting somebody in front of the net. They were giving the loss an easy time of it. Well, the Canadians have come up with a fairly flawless performance so far in the hockey game of 21 seconds goal in the second period. And if you hold a team that skates and shoots like Minnesota with 12 shots to this point, you have got to be playing outstanding hockey. Oh, well, sure, uh, Minnesota, when they get the puck, Danny, they're standing still. You remember in the first game, those crisscross patterns, hitting the man when he's in motion? Tonight, they all seem to be standing still. When they get the puck, the Canadians right at him. You won't beat anybody if you're standing still. You've got to have that motion. Well, right now, the North Stars have the face off to the left of Bunny LaRock. Draw goes in behind the net. Racing to the right side, Shingra gets it out to center. Got over to the roof. He shoots a big save. Another shot! And it's all taken away there with the defenseman, number five, Maxwell, being the goalie. 
That reminded me of Mark Howe to Hartford a week ago last night. Now the North Stars, it's knocked down in front. Cleared off on the right side, where it's picked up by Napier. Napier going in, he lost his six. Beer takes him in on the board. That was Maxwell, was it? I didn't get a second look, I think it was. You know, I'm impressed with this young fellow here, Mark Napier. He has added a spark in the Canadians' attack, constantly skating, moving into the zone. But, but LaRue, he has to be snake bit. Watch this shot here from the top of the circle. It looks like he has the far side. That's what he goes for. Good save by Malosh. Now he's got the rebound. Malosh has no idea where it is. Still got an angle to shoot it in. There it is, off the post, just laying in the crease area. The North Stars were able to recover. A minute and 36 seconds, the time remaining in the second period. The shots on goal 29 to 13. Now Minnesota. It's McCarthy coming down, going in over the line. He spun around at the defense. The puck off to the corner by Ganey. Couldn't clear it out. Young stopped it. Now the North Stars are pressing. McCarthy almost got it to the point where he was right in front of the Rock when it rolls to the wing and the Canadians clearing it down the ice. Called on the icing in practice. Now the North Stars had the Canadians run around a bit. And just to make certain, in the regroup, fire the puck down the board. And down the ice. Just get a face off. Now you can get yourself into a situation where, hey, guys, let's, let's settle down here. Of course, at this time, Claude Burrell will make the change. Well, these fans are roaming above, beginning to roam above. They are not riveting their attention. I like what's the, happening on the ice. They seem to struggle and dissatisfied with the score of four. I like what Burrell's doing. He puts his best face off man out there. You don't want a goal scored against you in the last minute play. The Canadians want to go in the dressing room with that 4-0 lead. And, of course, the North Stars want a goal here, but they're not going to get it this time because the Canadians lugging it out. Led by Trombley, it stopped at the line by Giles. He rolled it ahead. Langway playing it across the Minnesota line. And now exactly 50 seconds left in the second period. Buck at center. Lombier trying to pick it up cleanly. Payne was belted at center, knocked to the ice by Ool. I don't know whether Ool hurt himself or not. He could up he went to the Canadian bench very quickly, but I think the expiration of the time for that line had arrived. Here's Payne coming in. What a hockey player he is. Back to Hartsburg. There's the shot. Right on. I don't know whether it was screened or not, but it was a low shot, and that's all the danger. Well, LaRock hasn't had much work, but he's kept it in. There's the drop pass and the wrist shot. That's so important. Get that shot through. But the Canadians did a great job there at clearing the front of the net. And you know, Dan, there's an old thing. Make the puck do the work for you. The Canadians, that's another thing they've done so well. Headman that puck. You know, when you pass it, it moves a lot faster than you can skate. And they've been in motion and throwing that puck up ahead and penetrating that zone. All the North Stars have been doing tonight is chasing. They're just chasing all over the ice trying to get a hold of it. They have the big line out there for this face off. Smith, McAdam, and Payne back on the defense fired along with Greg Smith. Canadians again getting it out over the line. Jarvis jams out of the play outside the line. It's returned in there by Minnesota. Robinson behind the net. Getting it up. It's intercepted by Payne. There's a shot. Oh, what a glorious scoring opportunity he had there because the rock was covered by Englund. And by McAdam. Didn't that hit McAdam's skate in the crease area? I think he actually it. kept it from going in the net. Oh, that was the goal. Let's stand. Let's have a look. See if we can see this one. There's the shot. Now you really couldn't tell. I think it hit his left skate, do you see? There's the end of the second period. I guess that was their best scoring opportunity in that period. Well, perhaps the Canadians were imposters the first two games. But you see the real Canadians out there tonight. And so the score at the end of the second period, Montreal four, Minnesota nothing. A part of a story, a new breed of story part. The new 80 cubic inch Harley Davidson short line. So sweet, so smooth, it's more than a machine.
West German engineers are learning new techniques. They know Canadians have one of the most reasonably priced and reliable electric power services in the world. And like many other countries, they come to study our innovation. Like the enormous power output achieved at this plant. Well done, Canada. Constant innovation is one reason Canadians enjoy one of the most reasonably priced and reliable electric power services in the world. Look, there's a lucky camera. Like the one you see in the manly Irish dream show. It has the fine fresh grain of a spring day in Ireland. And the unique double deodorant system. Lean and white. Two deodorant. It helps keep a man feeling clean and fresh. Manly, yes. Look at the Irish. Try your luck in the Irish Spring Contest. Win one of five trips for two to Las Vegas. That's another do-it-yourself trusty order, Colonel. Seems everyone's discovering what the value is of defeating the crowd. There is none better. I can't think of an easier way of entertaining. Everybody loves the good tasty Kentucky Fried Chicken, and your buffet includes everything they need. There's nothing like it. Thank you, Colonel. At the end of two periods, here in Bloomington, Minnesota, the Montreal Canadiens lead the North Stars 4-0. Montreal with a couple of goals in each of the two periods. In that second period, Doug Jarvis with his second of the night. And then Rod Langley on a power play. In the second period, the Canadiens both shot the North Stars 11-8. Overall, their margin is 29-15. to Well, time now for the next episode on Showdown 80. And tonight, the old time take over, featuring two former North Trophy winners, Hall of Fame members now, Pierre Palop and Harry Howell. I'm Harry Howell, and tonight we start the old-timer showdown. With me here is Pierre Pallot, the man I'm going to defeat tonight. Well, uh, that's very good of you to think that way, but I'm going to try very hard to uh, make a liar out of you. Well, you usually did all through your career, I know that. Uh, Chicago used to finish a little ahead of the Rangers uh, after the first few years. Well, I guess we had some good hockey players, you know, like Bobby Hall and McKeever. No, we didn't. He doesn't mention himself. The only one seeing all his trophies, not too bad, Pierre. Well, just about to me. Try you on one, too. <laughs> and congratulations on being an old thing. Oh, thank you very much. Putting out more money? Maybe you're going to need to do them with fresh champion spark plugs. They can improve your economy. It's like getting more gas in your tank and more money in your bank. Fill her up with fresh champion. Well, Gary Dornhofer, I'm really looking forward to this matchup tonight. Pierre Pallant, former star with Chicago. There's Harry Howell playing a little game of keep away, or hog, as King Clancy might call it, with our friend Peter Puck. And in goal tonight, we're going to be watching Charlie Hodge, played with several NHL clubs, all three competitors, 47 years old tonight. Well, we're not going to take it easy on this passing course for the old-timers. They must make two passes. One has to be a backhand. There's a second penalty for missing the passing target, and they receive a second bonus for hitting that target. It's five points to the winner. Well, there's Harry Howell. He's going to be up first, and there he is, Gary, in his heyday until guys like you help turn that hair a little grayer. <laughs> well, I, uh, I played uh, against him for a few years, and he was a real tough guy in front of that end. He moved the players out of there to give a goaltender a chance to see what was happening. Look at him kick those guys against the board. Harry and Pierre still play for the NHL old-timers. He played 21 years in the league, won the Norris Trophy one year. Never on a Stanley Cup team, but he is in the Hockey Hall of Fame. I'm on the box, and I don't know what it's meant to let him go first and see what he does. Uh, you know, yeah. you go. Well, Pierre decided to let Harry go first, and away he is, off on the door. Look at those legs move. <laughs> Well, there's one, and he hit it dead on. Now the backhand pass. Got it oh, again. Oh. Look out, Harry. Taking a long way around there. Come on, Harry. Don't post. Make those legs go. Here it is. Oh, he got a target. How about that? Would you believe it? He hit that target? I don't believe it. He's grinning. Good show, Harry. Harry hit all three targets. Two in the court, one in the net. 
His time was 18.93 with a second bonus of 17.93. That's going to be tough to beat. Harry, that was just an outstanding uh, event that you had there right through with a passing drill. But the outstanding part is you even hit the target. Well, naturally, because I aimed for the top right-hand corner and hit the lower left-hand corner, which typical Harry Hall does. <laughs> there must be something here, because you really weren't noted as a great goal scorer, you know, 35, 40 goals a year. But, you know, you picked that one plainly. I know, but as I say, it was strictly luck because I was looking at a different one. I, all through the warm-up, I'm warming up there. I shot 15 shots in the warm-up, didn't hit one, but uh, got lucky when it counted. There's modesty for you. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> Pierre Pilat thinking of the time to beat. 17.93. We'll be right back. These five men are going to show you just how easily Lawn Boy attachments turn the Lawn Boy Supreme into five different mowers. Number one is turning his Lawn Boy into a loose threader. Number two, a rear bagger. Number three is going to mow his grass. Number four will use his Lawn Boy as a side bagger. And number five will use his with no attachments at all. Lawn Boy. A five-in-one mower. Come on, boy. The only way to mow. I think you got it, Harry. Oh, well, Pierre Pallot has just conceded the course event, Gary. He came to all kinds of grief. Well, it started off with that little pass there that just slid by the target. And then he was kind of like a poor little lamb who's lost his way. And this is, he said, well, it's all over. <laughs> I can't make anything out of this. I'll give up right here. So we go to the second event worth five points as Charlie Hodge gets set in goal. Come on, Pierre, make some amends here. Play like you did when you were with Chicago. Here's a young Pierre Pilot, some great years with the Chicago Blackhawks. 13 years in the league, the James Norris Trophy, three consecutive years, eight years an All-Star. Well, he was the real leader for that Blackhawks club and the captain of the team. What a passer he was. He's in the Hockey Hall of Fame now, owns his own business, manufacturing luggage, lives on a farm in Georgetown, Ontario, trains hunting dogs. Well, let's see what Pierre can do. Five shots in 40 seconds. Well, he tried the old shift, but Charlie Hodge came out there and take it away from him. Great to see him out here and 
and go through these girls, and uh, you're quite a man, Derek. Well, thank you very much. Uh, maybe the next time, <laughs> the next time. I guess Harry Howell was in line. He beat me. Both <laughs> Hall of Famers, Harry Howell and Pierre Pilon. Next time, Andy Bathgate meets Stormy Ullman in our Old Timers series on Showdown. And tomorrow night, the Old Timers back with Tony Elman and Andy Bathgate in the spotlight. Well, here in Bloomington, at the end of two periods, the Montreal Canadiens have a commanding lead, 4-0, the Canadiens over the Minnesota North Side. And next, I'll be talking with yet another Hall of Famer on our show tonight, goaltender Jacques Plante, the only goaltender to win five straight Stanley Cups. Jacques will be along and will return with the Stanley Cup playoffs in just a moment. Since 1977, we've had ESP, the extended service plan option covered specified repair costs and new Ford and Mercury cars and light trucks for three years or 60,000 kilometers. And now this year, ESP is even better with wider coverage and special new options like a lower cost power train only plan for Pinto, Fiesta, and Bobcat buyers across Canada and the U.S. Buying or leasing, you're covered with the Ford extended service plan. Ask about your ESP. Full details at participating Ford and Mercury dealers. It's a 4 nothing hockey game, the Canadians leading the North Stars, Doug Jarvis leading the way offensively for Montreal with two goals as the Canadians scored twice in the first period, twice again in the second. That's a great pleasure for us in Hockey Night in Canada, as we again have Jacques Clark. Chad, listen, Jacques, time at our disposal, like to talk about the goal here tonight, and Jim Malosh, who has just really despite the four goals, and he has been the top individual for the last two. Yes, uh, I haven't seen him play in three years, and uh, I was uh, looking forward to that. That's the reason I'm here tonight, to try and stop him, just in case uh, the Flyers meet them. And uh, actually, I was very surprised to see the way he handles himself in front of the net. He challenges all the shooters. Uh, if nobody's in front, he'll be out about five feet in front and wait for that shot. And when it comes, he's ready for it. If it goes from one side to the other, he'll follow it. He's got a very quick hand. Uh, he uses a weak style, quite a bit uh, like a Fujito, but instead of going back and forth, he just holds his ground and waits for it. Uh, he's really impressive. A fellow who has been 10 years in the league, Jack, never been in the playoffs until now, so he's getting good. Yes, uh, finally he has a chance to prove that he's a good goaltender. When you're uh, with a bad team, uh, it doesn't matter how well you play, uh, nobody's going to notice you. But if you're with a good team and you're a good goaltender, then you can see what you can do. Because you make that first save and somebody else is there, there to get the rebound. Or uh, you have somebody that's going to help you to clear your angles, rather than have two or three guys coming your own angle. So uh, he's uh, able to do that now. But at the other end, we don't say much uh, about La uh, Tonight we didn't have much work. But uh, we're about four minutes to go in this last period. He made a good uh, block play. That puck was really good for the corner. And then in the scramble, just toward the end, we thought that hit somebody straight. But with two guys pushing in front of him, he was down there, ready to make the play, made uh, a bad play. Uh, it could have been a goal there. So actually, even with the few shots he had, he could have had two goals against him. Having played as much as you've had for the Canadians, how do you think you're playing better on the road as opposed to a home? Does this surprise you about a Montreal goal time? No, it doesn't, because in Montreal, the fans are very demanding, and especially for goal time, they, uh, it's easier to be in. Okay, Jacques, thanks very much for dropping by. Jacques Plante, and now, upstairs, Gary Dornhofer and Danny Dallas. Okay, Dick, and uh, this hockey game is about to move into the third series. Canadians set to the Masters here tonight so far, but still a big jury to go. They're leading four to nothing. Shots on goal, so 29 to 15 for Montreal. So the question then, Gary Dornhofer, what are the Montreal Canadians doing tonight successfully that they were unable to execute in Montreal against this fine Minnesota team? Well, first of all, Danny, they solved a little bit of Malosh's uh, puck-stopping ability. They put those four goals, but 
A lot of positive things for the Canadians. Uh, number one, they're, they've taken that skating uh, game away from the North Stars. They're getting right on top of them. You know, any any time a North Star player touches the puck, right away it's a bunt. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, and, and they're they're not uh, they're not giving them that skating room. And the North Stars, all they're doing is chasing the chains all over the ice. And the, the important thing is their shift. Very short. They always have the fresh troops out there. And you notice when the Canadians change, it's everybody together. Not one, two, and then maybe the third guy 20 seconds later. But they come to that blue line, they dump it in, all three men come off together, and new troops go out there. What do you see happening in the third period? Same style. They're not going to let up. But I think it's very important for the North Stars to have a solid third period. If the Canadians are going to win, and they'll win tonight, there's no question, they're playing too well, it's make them work hard for that win. Don't give them an easy time of it, because it may uh, help them tomorrow night. Because they got to play again tomorrow. And uh, another thing, I'd like to see Claude Burrell use his whole thing. Let's, let's give the Gannies, the Robinsons, a little rest. Well, when you consider the North Stars of 40 games here this year, the very building lost to five. And they, I think they must have averaged 45 to 50 shots practically every game. You have to be at your game to hold them, as you said, to 15 oh, But There's no question, Dan, but it's a constant four second. I always have a man. As soon as you touch the puck, there's, uh, there's somebody on you. You know, it's tough to play the game when your head is up against the glass. And that's what's happened to the uh, North Stars tonight. on goal so 29 to 15 for Montreal. So the question then Gary Dorn off of what are the Montreal Canadians doing tonight successfully that they were unable to execute in Montreal against this fine Minnesota team. Well first of all Danny they solved a little bit of a lot of puck stopping the belly. It put those four goals but a lot of positive things for the Canadians. Uh, number one they're they've taken that skating uh, game away from the North Star. They're getting right on top of them. You know, any any time a North Star player touches the puck right away it's a bunt. Oh sorry. <laughs> you know and, and they're they're not uh, they're not giving them that skating room and the North Stars all they're doing is chasing the chains all over the ice. And the, the important thing is their shift. Very short. They always have the fresh troops out there. And you notice when the Canadians came get everybody together. Not one two and then maybe the third guy 20 seconds later but they come to that blue line they dump it in all three men come off together and new troops go out there what do you see happening in the third period same style they're not going to let up but i think it's very important for the north stars to have a solid third period if the canadians are going to win and they'll win tonight there's no question they're playing too well it makes them work hard for that win don't give them an easy time of it because it may uh, help them tomorrow night because they got to play again tomorrow uh, another thing, I'd like to see Claude Burrell use his whole bench. Let's, let's give the Gannies, the Robinsons, a little rest. Well, when you consider the North Stars in 40 games here this year, the very building lost to five. And they, I think they must have averaged 45 to 50 shots practically every game. You have to be at your game to hold them as you did to 15 well, but There's no question, Dan, but it's that constant four checking. I always have a man. As soon as you touch the puck, there's, a, there's somebody on you. You know, it's tough to play the game when your head is up against the glass. And that's what's happened to the uh, North Stars tonight. Every time they touch the puck, they're looking at the crowd. You know, somebody's on them, and it's difficult to play that way. You can't set up those plays. Well, Doug Jarvis has a couple of goals, and aside from that, you don't expect that he would get uh, two goals in a big game like this, but that last one, he executed beautifully, and he's still playing a fine uh, defensive game. You see, he had Langley scored the second period. Now, there's the shot total. Minnesota did manage a few more than the first, but nothing really of the difficult variety. But, you know, we talk about uh, that goal that Jarvis got. You know, time and time again, the coaches will always say that second man head for the net, because that's where the action is. You know, another thing the North Stars are not doing tonight, as Dan, they're, they're not sending those two guys in. You know, one guy takes the puck carry, the next guy takes the puck. Well, tomorrow night, of course, the series continues. That'll be 8.30 Eastern Standard Time right here in Minneapolis. And we expect another full house to watch this exciting series between the North Stars and the Canadians. Well, they're already sold out, of course. Uh, that is the seat. They put up 600 tickets, standing room tickets for sale the day of the game. And there was a lineup. Some people lined up from about 3 o'clock this morning to get in line. And they'll do the same thing tomorrow morning. They're going to sale at 9.30. So now we are ready for the start. 
Now this third period, there's one of the big stars for the Canadians, number 21, Jarvis. It is Smith on with McAdam and Payne for Minnesota. There's a shot by number two, Gingra, and Laxter hurts somebody up there with the central of the beach. This is a wonderful ring. Uh, they built it just prior to coming into the league in 1967, and uh, they did it for six million dollars. And of course, if they were to build it today, it would cost them double that. They'd have to get Gary Goenhofer to sponsor it. There's Giles coming down on the left side. He carries it off the board. Canadians on the right wing. There's Jarkra hitting Jarvis. He couldn't hold it. It's into the corner. Striding in there is Keeney. Keeney has played an outstanding game tonight. Down the North Stars. Into the center ice area. Smith. Smith over the line. Tied up by Robinson. Minnesota keeping it in. Hertzberg taking a shot. And it was blocked by defenseman Robinson. There's Robinson again. Canadians are doing something that the North Stars did successfully to keep it in Montreal. They're blocking a lot of shots. North Stars flicking that puck into the corner. Kristoff is going in. He's chasing it against Robinson. Kristoff, very promising looking hockey player. Into the center ice area. Cool cleared it to the corner. In behind the net, Carl Lombier is looking for it. He bumps him on the board, but Zanuski is knocked down on the right side into Montreal territory, and there's Langway over to Engblom up on the board that goes to center to Trombley. Trombley tied up. In over the line, they come. There's he taking his shot. He couldn't get a good shot away, and it went wide. Montreal shooting it through the center. Down the ice with the goal. Back towards goal. Greg Smith. Two Smith for Minnesota. Bobby, I suppose, the more famous of the two at this particular juncture of the season. Now Anderson going in, and he's fired in a rising shot. And then he was jumped by Langway, who now has the puck into the center right area over the line. Napier makes the shot. He's down to the ice by Barrett. McCarthy playing it on the other side. Montreal, the roots, trying to keep it in. Out it comes. Down over the line. McCarthy has dropped past the young pass and cleared it in front. And the Canadians starting out. A fancy dance cleared by LaRue to get away and trip by Spear. There's an offside. From the net center in Bloomington, Minnesota, Stanley Cup 80. Super Radio pulls in station from hundreds of miles away, so you can go far away and still get down a great sound. New Super Radio from Canadian General Electric. One game is over tonight in the quarterfinals. The New York Islanders have beaten the Boston Bruins five to three. So Danny, they have a stranglehold on that series. The Islanders now up three zip. Fatigue has set in for the ball under eight. Has to be. Is it only fatigue? There's a lot of ability on the New York Islanders team. Well, just look at the schedule they had at the end there, Danny. Oh, I'm not taking anything away from the Islanders. I watched them play at the, uh, near the end of the year, and they played solid, disciplined hockey. And, you know that really isn't uh, an upset in the making when you look at it. Well, Peters has to be tired. What is he, 39 years of age, and the way they work him. Not that old, eh? It's a mistake. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, that's old athletically. You're still a youth, uh, Gary. Okay. okay, thank you. If anybody's going to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning just to play golf. However, if I was as good as you, I'd be up at 5. The puck is in the corner in behind the Minnesota net. Back it comes LaRouche, shoots it. Another shot by LaRouche. Scores! He kept pounding away at that, didn't he? Frustration finally over for Pierre Rouge. Gary, you talked to him yesterday again today. He took the rebound off the defenseman who made the initial save, really. Well, would you say he was, would you say he was due to oh, Dick, you over, know? Overdue. Ah, here he is, right in that slot. Look at how Anderson skates away from him on the rebound. Nobody near him. Makes the circle, and boy, you can't give a guy like Rouge that second chance. He makes it good. 
Outside the Montreal line, shot by goal now at 30 to 16. Montreal is part of that category as well. Barrett shooting it in. Ray Jan fails to clear it the first time. He gets the second track at it. It's down in the Minnesota zone. Zanussi couldn't hold it. Langway shooting it in, the same pattern of performance taking place here for the Canadians despite the fact they're leading 5 nothing. They're up there for checking. And the North Stars come back, a shot stopped at the defense. Foley cleared it into the corner around the net. Montreal Canadians on the left side, with Poole slashing at the center. Smith over on the other side, he missed his man with the pass, and this is played off, and that is the trigger to the back, and Gary has alluded to it often. The easy four seconds of the Canadians. They're right on top of the North Stars. There's McAdam passing it in. And Kane was checked by two players there. He couldn't pick it up. Now Gainey firing it into the center ice area. Jarvis over the line. Lob one in there. A harmless type of shot. But Dougie doesn't care that he's Jarvis is right now. He has made his immense contribution to the lead of the Canadian fans. They need five up. He's driving the two goals. Now back at the Montreal line. Jartra laying it out over the line. Giles coming in. Fired it around the net. McAdam coming in from the right side. Robinson takes over. Just did get it over to Shingra. Ahead to Steve Shutt. Shutt is breaking right in the field. Fired and right back to us. But give the goalie credit. He came out. He did the challenge thing. I don't know, Gary. People go in and deke and they say he should have shot. He shot. Oh. Well, I don't know. Uh, maybe a poor selection of shots to let that flat shot go. How accurate is uh, Dickie St. Chuck play a lot? Why not the wrist shot? You got a chance to have a look, keep your head up. You know you got the puck and pick a corner. And the gunner, there's no doubt about it. That's his game. Great stop by the line. From the face-off. Cutting from the corner. First off, a neat pass goes ahead. He's clearing it in. Jingra takes a look. He headmans that puck again to the line. Here is Napier working down on that right side. In over the line. Good move by Napier. Napier takes a look. He takes a shot from a very severe angle. There was no way he was going to score himself from that, but I suppose he thought it may have hit somebody on the rebound. Now, he's clearing it in. Zanussi, it goes to the corner. Grabbed off by Napier. Napier ahead on the right side. Canadian at the Minnesota line. Barrett is turning, coming down slowly. Gets it ahead. Kristoff is set by Robinson. Pass goes back to a fool from Langway. Over on the right side. Bromley takes the shot. The Lars looked everywhere. He didn't know where that was. That was a hard drive from the right side. Back into the center ice area. Fired in there by Barrett. And the North Stars are making 
while the play goes on off there, clear to the head. Maxwell, he had a gilded scoring opportunity in the first period, an opportunity to put Minnesota ahead. Now over it goes, Young shooting it, and it goes off the stick of Angla, the defenseman over there, checking in over the top. This is Stanley Cup 80 from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. This family has rented a rider truck and moved 500 miles. By packing and moving themselves, they saved a lot of money over what professional movers wanted. So when you rent a rider truck, you have to do the work yourself. But if you just keep repeating how much money you save, you'll be amazed how much lighter those guns will seem. The attendance here tonight, 15,820. That is a playoff record for this building. Back to Hartsburg, his shot is blocked. The North Stars get on the board. McCavin puts it. Now McCavin gets it a second time. Back it goes to the line. Right in front of the cabin. Oh, God, and he missed a great opportunity to get the first goal for Minnesota. Canadian. Coming out into the center right area. Jarvis is up and it. Giles is back in on the left side. Giles coming in with McAdam. He's being checked by Ganey. Ganey goes to the corner and then Langley gets it to the point. Not out. But Ganey will lug it out over the line with the assistance of Starcraft. Anklub on the right side. His pass knocked down. Giles coming down on the left wing. Alex to take the long shot. No difficulties there for the Rock. Well, minutes and 45 seconds of time remaining. Canadians coming in. The Rouge couldn't get a good shot against Greg Smith. It's fire to the other side. Kristoff knifes it into the center right area. Big Robinson spins around. Now it's cleared ahead and knocked down. North Stars in over the line and a call on the offside. It was passed ahead to the club. Scout by nothing here in Minnesota, in New York. The Flyers ahead of the Rangers, 1-0. Daly scoring for Philadelphia. That's late in the second period. Buffalo leading Chicago, 2-1 in the third. Sealing and Dudley for the Sabres. Dudley and Sutter for the Blackhawks. The one game is over. The Islanders have beaten Boston by a score of 5-3. They beat that series now, three games to nil. They saw from the center right area and this huge crowd that came here with such glorious hot what would take place in favor of their North Stars. They have been disappointed, but this is an outstanding hockey team for the Minnesota team. Tonight, they're being outplayed by a wide margin. There's no question about it. There's a shot by Sanusi. It went off Robinson, I think, off the glass, and then out on the right side. Into the center right area. They fight for possession. Robinson takes over. Twist and turn. Goes back. Lays it up on the right side. Now the Napier looks for an opening. Comes down with that hit. Face takes off his man. Then he lost it to McCarthy. He played it back in. Up on the left side. A pass. Sorry. Head to McCarthy. Probably a situation for the Canadians where they're going along with his checking and checking to the bitter red, even though they're leading five to nothing. Down on the left, right side. Here's Anderson cutting around the net. He tried to center it into a three. And it's grabbed by LaRock. With the score, Montreal five, Minnesota nothing. This is Stanley Cup 80. July 9th, disaster strikes the Blackwood Mountain, and home life is there. Home life. The chainsaw king, as rugged and reliable as the men who run. Stop it at Stony Creek when you've got a chance. And soon you're walking out the only way you know how, a winner. When the time in your life comes to get a chainsaw, get the king. A Canadian made home life, the chainsaw king. and 12 left in regulation time. There you see it with the score 5 nothing. Kind of a pushing and shoving set up, Gary. Just as the whistle went after that puck bounced into the goal crease and the rock fell on it right there. Well, from the Minnesota North Stars, it's a, just a case of frustration. 
You know, it's been a tough night for them. They expected greater things, but it just hasn't materialized. And right now, the North Stars, everybody across the Montreal line. Back it goes. They wind up for a shot. Lambert fell, and he got it out to Dupont on the left side, and the pass up the line is cleared to center by Anderson. Lambert hitting the line, faking the shot. He's over the line, and it's cleared to the right side. North Stars rolling in the center. Langway laying it up on the right wing. Mir ahead for McCarthy. Back it goes. No room to skate for the North Stars. And in frustration, no doubt, they just got rid of it and cleared it down the ice. They're tall for ice. He needs both the five to nothing against him. Barry, a situation like this, a turnaround, where does the experience factor come in? Montreal, the experience team, as opposed to them. Well, the way the North Stars are playing tonight, they're handling that puck like it's a brick. You know, they're, they're not making very many good plays. They're not skating. They're not doing much of anything. This game, it's, uh, as far as we're concerned, it's over. I think what you'll see tomorrow night is if the North Stars can gain their composure. And, you know, we talked about that experience. That's, I think, when it really come into play. And I would think thousands in the net center agree with you that as far as they're concerned, the game is over, is it? As general march to the exit. Maybe they want to be first in line for the tickets when they go on sale in the morning. Trouble is, most of these people leaving here, people who have tickets for oh, the <laughs> Now the puck is cleared in behind the Minnesota goal. Up there for checking, Ray Jan Uhl along with Napier and shot out. They come on the right side. Young hands jump ended by shot. Puck is cleared back to center by Gingrau. Hartsburg is turning, backhands it in over the line. Striding in there is Robinson. Could have thought that perhaps at this stage in the game, leading five to nothing, that Ruel well would rest somebody like Robinson, who has played about 40 minutes, I think, in the previous game. I would have. You know, they got to play again tomorrow, and it'll be a tougher game for Montreal tomorrow night. Here's Ganey. Ganey tried to get his stick loose. And Giles, he couldn't into the center ice area. Olich is on there, he took that long shot up on the left side, Ganey is going after it, he rocks into the center ice area, a long pass into the corner for Jeremy, he spins around against Tired, now off the side of the net, Smith is checked and he cleared at the center, here is Jarvis playing it back to Langway. Five to nothing, Montreal, nine minutes and five seconds, the time remaining in this, the third period. There's Barrett taking his shot, nowhere near the net. Into the corner, grabbed off by McCadam, he drives to center it, then he falls, Smith reaches for it, and when he reaches, he goes places, doesn't he? He's a tall boy. Now it's back in along the board, and it's cleared out by Jarvis, and it goes into the Canadian player thing. Stanley Cup 80 will continue in just a moment. Here it comes. Canada's weight-selling 40 little car. And see how it runs. The excitement begins the moment you get behind the wheel. Mustang, a real thoroughbred on the open road. Fun to drive. Great fuel economy. Reasonably priced. If you're ready for a new scene, you don't have to climb a mountain. Just see your board here. Very few the shots on all that total in the game. Gary, I think it's 4-3 Montreal this period, but I guess that's exactly what the Canadians wanted to be. That's well, on those 18 shots, Dick, I think they had probably four quality shots, you know, that were good scoring chances. Now Jarvis. Campers down on the right side. Shoots it in. Bob there is watching his man eat. Maxwell comes out with it, off the stick of Zanussi, down the ice, that could be icing it is, against the Minnesota. Well, there was a good example right there of how the Canadians are getting in front of the North Stars. They're giving uh, the Canadian defense all kinds of time when they get possession of the puck to make a play. That's why Robinson and Langway and the rest of them are able to make those passes up the center. Well, like a reminder of our broadcast of tomorrow night, game four, and it's an earlier start than tonight. Please note that 8.30 Eastern time tomorrow night. Back it goes. A Kingra clearing it around the net. On the other side, Kristoff being watched by Tomblay. 
Pierre has it, passes it over for Maxwell into the center ice area. Canadians are on it again, backhanded into the corner by Chambly. And there's a definite surprise beginning to develop this place as the fans move out, bowlers who are here. Don't seem to do much to cheer about. Let's see what happens here. Kristoff, he is a good shot, cutting in on the right side, getting it over to Zanussi. Backhand shot, in around the net, and we roll it back to the crease, and that got them excited. Now to the other side, Kristoff against Tomlin. Back it goes on the right side, Robinson fail to clear it out. He fired it back in there. Kristoff reaching for it, couldn't get it, and the Canadian from the corner, Langway, knocked into center. That brings it to seven minutes and 20 seconds of time remaining in the third period. In on that left side is Spear. He chopped the shot against Robinson. And it's over the glass. Live from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota, the Stanley Cup playoff. This is the real secret of Colonel Sanders' Kentucky Fried Chicken. Ingredients that are fresh and wholesome. Everything is very good. Mmm. Couldn't you go for some of that good chicken right now? There's nothing like it. Thank you, Colonel. Seven minutes and 13 seconds of time remaining. Five, nothing, Montreal. They let two to nothing at the end of one, four to nothing at the end of two, and they got a goal here in this third period. Langway getting that pistol. Right now, back it goes to Giles. He loves to shoot it, and he whips that one low, and it just missed. Up on the far side. Napier hopping in over the line. Giles is after him. Napier around the net. Napier takes a look. He loves it back to the line. Gives it off to Langway. There's the shot by Ray Brilliant save by the loss. Even though he's down five to nothing, the loss comes up with a great save. Well, that tells you something of the competitor that uh, Malaj is. He's been beaten for five, but he's hanging in there and still working as hard as he did at the beginning of the game. It is Young at center against Stool. Hartford. What a future for this Minnesota team. Outstanding hockey players. They're 22, 23, 24. They're going to be a great team for years. There's a long shot that bounced dangerously off the rock. Canadian coming back. Langway takes the shot. Rebound on Hartsburg. He takes a look, feeds it to Anderson. Anderson let it go. The Canadian's coming back. In over the line. There's the shot that didn't miss by much of Jarvis's stick. Jarvis is going for the hat trick. Now Young cleared it off the corner board. The Rock leaving it for Jindra. He's coming out. Takes off a man, but then passes it to Ganey, who left it at the line for Englob. Englob is shooting it in. Jartra. Ganey and Lombert moving in now to do the floor checking. North Star is starting out. It comes to center. It's picked up by Eve. Eve's in over the line. And it is offside. In the regular season games play here between these teams, the Canadian split losing 5-2. That was number six in their string of six straight losses in December. And then they won late in the season here, 4-3. And that area is just outside the Canadian school line. On the board. Blasting it in. Barrett. Robinson behind the net. Young hands moving in. Eve goes in. But the Canadians start out and it's intercepted that center. Lugging it in over the line. Barrett to Eve. Back in it goes to Bird. He tries to swing it in front. And Lombert has it up on the left side. It goes down to the Minnesota line. Smith, feeding it nowhere near his left wing, and it was gobbled up by Robinson and cleared out by Kingra. Robinson there again. Up to Lombert. In on the right side, Trombley goes against Smith. Barrett turns on the left wing. There's a pass to Bobby Smith. Coming down, takes the shot. Oh, that's gifted it. That was a good 
knuckle ball, I think, that just dipped the footer so and it gave LaRock difficulty. In the eye of the net it goes. Smith against Keeney. Up on the left side. There's the pass. Cleared over by Bobby Smith. McAdam in the goal. Kane has been covered in front. Couldn't pick up the pass. And Ganey knocked it into the center ice area. Four minutes and 30 seconds of time remaining in the third period. And this has not been titillating excitement or action for the Minnesota fans tonight. It's been a night for the most part of frustration. Now in on the left side, a shot right on by Smith. Now he goes to the Minnesota bench down on the right side. It cleared in by Chartra. Scott looks at his man, couldn't intercept the pass. Out it goes to center to Uhl stop it. Now Maxwell shoots it in on the left wing. Here it is picked up by Kristoff. And there's a stick above the shoulder making contact in the faceoff the outside the line. This Stanley Cup playoff game is coming to you from the Met Center in Bloomington, Minnesota. It's for people like you, people who do what you want. Great selection of gardening supplies at down to earth prices. Come to Canadian Tire. You'll find the things you need in the spring to help you grow the garden you want in the summer. It's for people like you, people who do Canadian Tire. 3.49, the time remaining. We've got a fair number of Winnipeggers who drove the 500 miles for this game. John Ferguson is here. He didn't drive. He came by plane. He's here with his son and Bill Sutherland. Now, the North Stars trying to get it in front. They'd love right now to break the shutout that is being registered against them. There's a bit of a nickname in the with the shutout. And if you get one goal, you destroy that particular mark. Definitely to do you much good from the point of view of winning the hockey game down five at this stage with three minutes and 12 seconds remaining. Now the North Stars coming back and impenetrable again was the lineup in front of the goalie. Now Napier flipped it and it goes around the net. Giles way up on the left side with that pass and he missed ease. Engblom dashing down on the right side, throws up, takes that rising shot that booms off the glass behind the net. Into the corner, McCarthy on the board, fighting now with Lombert. Trombley moving in against Greg Smith. There's an old-fashioned scrum there, but out they come with it. Anderson hits the line, over the line. And again, Montreal knocking it into the center right area. Trombley coming down, drops it back. Dupont couldn't get it. He fights along the boards with Greg Smith and Anderson. And finally, the North Stars roll it to the Canadian zone. Langway takes a look. Up it goes to center. Five to nothing for Montreal. Now Ganey back to Chartraw. Chartraw plays it on the board. Ganey moving in for it. He centers it. Here's Jarvis. Jarvis passing it back. Chartraw takes a shot, and he wraps it off a leg. And he's with the pressure on here, less than two minutes. Here it comes to the side of the net. Chantra ran into the lot. Now the North Stars coming out on the left wing at center. They shoot it into the corner. In there goes Young and The pass came off the side of the net. Gaining being watched by Polich. North Stars keeping it in along the boards. And now Englund will probably clear it out. Englund is very strong at the fence for the Montreal Canadiens tonight. And he is rushed rather effectively. Stops on goal at 36-22. That's a nice call against Montreal. 1-19 left, Mr. Schoenhofer. And this has been a lesson night. A lesson for the Minnesota North Stars in all aspects of the game. There you see the empty seat. The home team is going to go down to defeat. Passing, skating, shooting, whatever. Canadians have excelled. But Danny, you don't win four Stanley Cup 
like winning. The Canadians down 2-0. It looks very bleak. But there's something, some uh, magnitude that is beyond words that seems to bring the Canadians out of that shell and make them go on when everything seems bleak. And they have done it tonight. Yes, but you don't have the type of year the Minnesota's had, particularly in this rink, losing just five of the 40 games without having something. They showed it in the two games that in Montreal and tomorrow night is another night. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the North Stars react. The young team. Here's Youngins in behind the net. Youngins trying to center it. Now it's Chuck. Chuck clearing it into the center ice area. Spear locks it back. There's the shot. The rebound. One minute left in the third period. Now Robinson clears it off to glass the center. And Robinson is still out there. And even though the outcome is not in doubt, He's playing and will probably get in another 35 or 40 minutes tonight. Now from the Minnesota line, into the center ice area. Holy just belted by Ool, and Ool is going on. So a penalty for tripping against Reza and Ool, 34 seconds left in the hockey game. Well, I like this guy's attitude, Ray John Rowe. He told me something this morning, but there you see the leg come out. Oh, it goes down. He was a real spark plug this morning. You know, you, you talk about the Canadians needed a shot in the arm. I think he was very instrumental before the game even started, Danny, this morning in practice. The enthusiasm that he was showing out there. Now yeah, here, here comes Foley down the ice, tries to cut to the inside. There's Newell, sticks out that leg, and I don't think there's any question about that one. But the North Stars, they'll think about it. They'll go back in their dressing room. I'm sure that they won't get much sleep tonight. But you have to forget about games like that. You know, Danny, this will probably do them more good by getting blown out rather than having a close game and losing. Well, you're not going to be brilliant night after night. Everybody has a bad game. So as you say, they'll just have to forget about that, come back and go at the Montreal Canadiens tomorrow night. Now, a step around the net, he sent it right out in front. There's the shot, and Bree serving the shot of the rock. And that was what they call it in the business, the point blank green type of shot. The cat will let it go, but it was straight at him, but the rock made the save. Well, that's one of the few real good scoring chances that the North Stars have had in this third period, but uh, Bobby Smith to McAdam, a spot that McAdam is so familiar with in that slot area. Now, Langway, belted it to the line. Here's Keeney cruising around. A dozen seconds left. Back to Robinson, up to Jarvis. And Jarvis has been a power of power for the Canadians to make number 21. Well, it's a treat, you know, when you get two goals for Jarvis. Up. There it is. Five to nothing. Montreal winning. The shots and goal 36 to 25. And some final comments, please. Well, the North Stars were very worthy of their two wins in Montreal, and the Canadians were certainly very worthy of their win tonight. You know, to some around La Rock who provided some spark. Of course, he really wasn't tested. A happy group. Maybe that's what it takes for the Canadians to get them on track. Well, that goes us from the top of the clock. Says it all. Tomorrow is another day. Absolutely right. And we'll uh, go over the strategy tomorrow night's game, what the North Stars may do, what the Canadians will do. But the Montreal team is certainly back in the hunt. And there's a fellow who's now having difficulty scoring goals. Steve Scott had a great scoring opportunity tonight, but he tried to put it through the end of the building, I thought. Uh, a little more finesse than close to the shot? Well, I, I think so, but uh, look at the defense, uh, Dan, that the uh, Montreal team employed today. They picked up the rebound. As soon as they got the puck, they let it go right away to the forward. Oh, yeah, I'd be happy to. <laughs> So that is the story, then, in just a moment, our three-star selection. You got the sunrise, you caught a prize, you hit me something. Party night, summer white, you and your friends and you're dancing. You hit the tail, water trail, you and your kids and you're dancing. Saturday night, distant life, you and your girl and you're dancing. 
you and your Johnson a way of life for over 50 years. Things are better when you and Johnson Things are like a summer job. Good day.